we want to not only conduct hypothesis tests for the difference in two population proportions, we also want to know what that difference between those two population proportions is. Of course, since they're population values, we're never going to actually know what they are, but we can, can construct a confidence interval for that difference, and that's what we're going to do here. So this will be the confidence interval for the difference in two population proportions. Technically, this is for independent population proportions, but since we're not going to work with dependent ones, it won't matter much to you. This is the formula for it, and isn't it a thing of beauty? It's really joyous there. Now, the requirements to construct this interval are the same ones that we had for the hypothesis test, the two prop Z test. So we have to have independent samples that are drawn with simple random sampling as usual. I mean, we don't do anything if it's not simple random sampling. Then we need n times p times 1 minus p to be greater than 10 in order to ensure that our distributions are normal for both group 1 and group 2. That's why we have it for group 1 over here and group 2 over here. So you have to check it twice if you are required to verify the requirements. Then you need n1 to be less than 5% of the capital N, the population size, and N2 to be less than 5% of the population size for group two in order to ensure independence. So if you have those three things, then you can construct a, a confidence interval or conduct a hypothesis test. And as usual, we don't often check these because we just usually assume that we have them which isn't always a great assumption to make, but in our course, we're working with the processes more than we are with the requirements. So um, if you're not asked to, to make sure you have the requirements met, then don't bother. But if you're asked to verify your requirements, that's what you would check. You would check with those three things. All right, and the point estimate, remember, is the center of your interval, which is that P1 hat minus P2 hat that is the, the foundation for this interval right here. That's the foundation for the interval, and then you add and subtract away your margin of error, and this is your margin of error. All right, and there's how to do it in the calculator, and we'll see that as we do this example here. So researchers from the Pew Forum on Religion and Public Life interviewed two samples, random samples of people. Both samples had 1,500 people. In 2002, 645 people expressed support for stem cell research. In 2009, 870 expressed support. Let group 1 be 2002. Now, this is a nice thing to know about right here, that group 1 thing. So when we see that, that kind of gives us a clue as to, you know, well, actually, it's not just a clue. It's a very important piece of information. If that's not given to you, just make it up. I mean, it doesn't really matter that much which one's group 1 and which one's group 2. But if the writer of the problem establishes one of them to be group 1, then you go with it. Now, P1 hat would be X1 over N1, right? So if it's X1 over N1, that would be... 645 divided by 1500, which makes a value of 0 0.43, if you don't believe me. Oops, 645. You really won't believe me if I don't type it correctly. So I divided by 1500. There we go. And while I'm on the subject, 870 divided by 1500 is 0.58. Okay, so I have x1, I better put this in. This is x1 over n1. And that's 645 over 1500. All right. Then for P2 hat, that would be X2 over N2, which is 870 over 1500, which is equal to 0.58. And there we have it. All right, now we're going to construct a 99% confidence interval for the difference P1 minus P2, the difference in the proportion of people who support stem cell research in the two different years. So this is a population proportion difference we're talking about. And of course, we don't know what the population proportion is because we didn't ask everybody in both of those years, so we, we can't tell the difference. But we can construct an interval. And here I said, just give the result. Don't show the work. That's me getting you out of having to write this big, huge formula. You're welcome. Right, so I'm not making you write the big formula. All you have to do is give me the result. So let's grab a calculator. And I'm going to make this here smaller so it can fit on the screen so we can see it. All right, so I'm going to go to oh, my mouse is being possessed there. All right, stats, tests. And you want to look for, there it is, letter B, 2 prop Z int. 2 because this is two groups. P1 and P2, right? Prop for proportions, that's why it's P's. Z 
int because you're making a z interval. You can tell you're making a z interval because right up here in the interval formula, first of all, it's an interval formula, and second of all, it uses z as the critical value right there, z alpha over 2. Okay, so I'm going to go to the calculators. Oop, stat. I just did that again. Sorry about that. And I want to go to letter B. There we go. And then I'm going to type 645, 1500, 870, 1500, and then 99.99 is my confidence level. I'm going to go down to calculate and press enter. And there I can see the values of negative 0.1965 to negative 0.1035. All right. Now, calculate the point estimate of the difference in the proportion of people who support stem cell research in the two different years. Oh, that's not a question. That's a statement. I will fix that. Okay, now, from the data, that would be P1 hat minus P2 hat, right? So P1 hat minus P2 hat, but we already know P1 hat and P2 hat because we found them up here. Now, granted, we could use the decimals, but it's a little bit more accurate to use the fractions. This one, this particular problem, it actually won't matter which way you do it because these fractions worked out to be perfect. But if you did care about decimal places, you'd be better off with the fractions and then rounding at the very end. So you get negative 0.15 right there. So that's using the data that was found above. And notice, right, this data right here comes from 645 right there. And then this right here comes from the 870. And then 1500 is really both of those, so I don't want to highlight them in either color. Here, I'll do half of it in blue and half of it in green because it, it doesn't really, um, it's the same number for both of them in this particular instance. All right, so that's what I'm using down here. I'm using those blue and green numbers, right? I'm using the P1 hat and the P2 hat. All right, now to find it from the interval, let me remind you of what the interval looks like. So you've got your lower end over here at negative 0.1965. You've got your upper end over here at negative 0.1035. Notice the upper is farther to the right on the number line than the lower. So the point estimate is going to be in the middle of the two. So it's, you could add up the two numbers and divide by two, and you'll know where your middle is because it's your center of your interval. And that's what I did right here. So I take the negative 0.1965 and I add to it negative 0.1035. Add them up and you're going to get negative 0.3 and then you divide it by 2. It's a little strange because you're adding a negative, but that's because you're trying to add the two ends and the two ends of your particular interval are both negative. And that's what makes this value right here negative and that's how we end up with negative 0.15. All right, now the margin of error is the distance from the edges to that center. So to find that, you can find it by subtracting the negative 0.1035 minus the point, negative 0.15, or negative 0.15 minus the negative 0.1965. Or you can just remember that it's half your interval, right? So if it's half your interval, you need to take your highest number, negative 0.1035, minus your lower number, which is negative 0.1965. And that means when you minus a minus like that, you're actually adding. So I'm going to take negative 0 0.1035 plus 0 0.1965, and I'll get 0 0.093. 0 0.093. And then I want to divide that in half. So divide it by 2, and I'll get 0 0.0465. And in this particular problem, there was no approximation. They were actually all equal. So that's why these are all equal signs in here, because we didn't have any need for approximation here. And there we go. Done. Now, let me type that up. So we are 99% confident. This is how we would interpret this. We are 99% confident that the true difference in the proportion of people who support stem cell research is between a oh, difference in the proportion of people who supported stem cell research from 2002 to 2009, because we want to say what years we're talking about, is between 10.35% and 19.65%. Now notice I turned both of them into percentages because it's kind of easier to imagine the interpretation portion that way. Furthermore, 
the negatives don't really matter. And I wanted to highlight that little bit right here. When you're interpreting, all you're trying to talk about is the differences. The reason they turned out to be negative is because I picked group one to be 2002. If I picked group two, one to be 2009, then the differences would have been positive. So don't pay attention to the negative parts when you're talking about the differences. All we're trying to talk about here is that there was a difference. And then it's between 10.35 and 19.65%. Now, if it's that much, doesn't that imply that there is a significant difference in those views from those two years? The answer is yes, absolutely, right? Remember, if there was no difference in the groups, that would mean that they were equal to each other. And that means when you subtract the proportion for the second group from the proportion from the first group, you would get zero. So if I change these to be, I don't know if I can fit this in, but let me try it. 2002, 2009, then when I took 2002, take away 2009, I would get zero. So there we'd have it. So our confidence interval, however, does not contain zero. And that implies that there is a significant difference in the support of stem cell research between the two years. All right, we're all done with that problem. Just remember that if your interval does contain zero, if zero is in the middle of your interval, that would imply that there is not a significant difference. When your interval does not contain zero, that implies there is a significant difference. And that's because zero is always our null hypothesis in this whole chapter. Every single hypothesis had a hypothesis test had zero as its null hypothesis value. And that is still true here.